All right, the final tidbit that we're going to go through, um, which is the Pacific Trails Resort case study, and then following that is the Java Jam Coffee House case study. We're going to work through Pacific Trails Resort together right now, and then um, I'll explain your homework after that. So in the handout that I gave you, um, the first part is just explaining what this site is going to be about. And this is something that we're actually going to be working with throughout this class. So <clears throat> we need to understand, <clears throat> excuse me, the background. So if you look at your handout, Melanie Bowie is the owner of Pacific Trails Resort um, located on the California North Coast. This resort offers a quiet getaway with luxury camping and yurts, along with an upscale lodge for dining and visiting with fellow guests. The target audience here is couples who enjoy nature and hiking, and Melanie would like a website that emphasizes the uniqueness of the location and the accommodations. She would like her website to include a homepage, a page about the special yurts, a reservation page with a contact form, and a page to describe the activities that are available. So this is kind of the site map, um, the flow chart, if you will. So from their home page, she wants them to be able to read about the yurts, the activities, and make reservations. Um, there's also a wireframe sketch that you can see here, and this is how she's decided, working with her designer, how she wants her page to look. So the header is typically something that's the same on every page of a website. It's usually the logo, maybe a background picture. Sometimes there's some address or contact information up here. Um, whatever, this is kind of like the masthead of the newspaper. It stays the same. The navigation section she chose to have at the top of the page running left to right rather than on this left-hand column like you often see it. The content area <clears throat> is where she'll have some divs. And remember, think of those as <clears throat> clear plastic bins. And what you put in them, you later can give a label to, and then you can stylize it depending on the label. So if you tell it to be, um, uh, like we talked about in class, putting kids' clothes in there. So like winter, two toddler clothes. That's how you would label it. And then later on, you could say, anything that I have in that div, the winter two toddler clothing div, I want to be on a pink background with white letters in Arial. So that's the stylizing that we'll learn about later. And then the final section down here is the footer. So three of the four of these remain constant from page to page. It's just this content div that changes out page by page. So. With that in mind, they want us to get going and on making this, but we're going to start even at a level prior to this. We're going to go to our desktop or to your jump drive, whatever it is that you prefer, and we're going to make a new folder for this. So I'm going to right click and choose to make a new folder. Boy, this is slow, slow, slow. new folder, and I'm going to call this new folder Pacific or Pacific Trails, whatever you want to do. Evidently you have to count to 100 before it actually works. All right, so we have a folder on our desktop named Pacific, and this is where our pages are going to come into play. Um, task 2 talks about creating a home page, and it's going to look like the figure 2.27, but instead of guessing what they want us to do, we're actually going to move on to the next steps, and we're going to follow their directions. So let's go into Notepad, and I would recommend that you grab that template document again that's blank. Um, it has all the basic skeleton, if you will, um, that we want. And we just need to make some changes here. So um, first of all, let's do a file, save as. And we need to save this into that folder that we just made, in my case, on my desktop. And the folder is called Pacific. So I'm going to save it in the Pacific folder. And the name of your home page within any folder always has to be index. So index.html. 
Um, I had the .html extension, so I didn't have to type that in this time, and I can see it worked. So up here I have index.html. Um, from here, step one says use a descriptive page title. The company name is a good choice. So right here we're going to type in the company name. So <clears throat> Pacific Trails Resort. Again, the spaces before and after it mean nothing. I could delete those out or keep those. Then they want us to move on in this wireframe, which is this. <clears throat> it's this. It's the chunks that we're going to um, use to later stylize. So we have a header, a nav, a content div, and a footer. And number two says, in the wireframe for the header. So in our body, the first thing that we're going to do is have an opening and closing header tag. And the reason we're doing this, it makes no difference, our code won't look any different, but the reason we're doing this is that later on when we switch to CSS and we're stylizing this, we can tell everything in the header tags, um, for example, to be on a blue background and to show this particular picture on the far right, so we can give it stylizing rules. So in this header section, they want <clears throat> the text Pacific Trails Resort contained within a heading one element. So we need to do caret h1, and then the words that they want are Pacific Trails Resort. And then close out your heading one. <clears throat> um, let's save and run this in Chrome, and I want to show you some differences or actually that there is no difference. It's more of a similarity. So I'm launching it in Chrome and it's taking its sweet time. <clears throat> All right, so the only thing we see is what's inside the body, number one, and move those over so they don't conflict and it's stylized with a header one. I want to show you that this header tag means nothing. I'm going to actually take it out. And I'm going to save and refresh this over here. It looks exactly the same. I have a heading one in my body. So the reason that we have these header tags, like I told you, is so that we can stylize this area later on. So that's our first section. <clears throat> then if we move on to number three, it says in the navigation area. area. So we need to have another area called nav. And then I'm going to go down a few lines and close that out. And this is where everything that we consider to be in our navigation wireframe is going to go. So everything that's going to live right in here and be stylized however we tell this part to stylize, that's what we're coding for now. All right, in this part, they want us to place the following text with bold text using the B element, so not strong. Home, yurts, activities, and reservations. And they also tell us what pages to link it to and to add extra spaces between the hyperlinks using the non-breaking space special character. So let's just start with the easy part of it being bold and closing out the bold. <clears throat> and then inside the bold tags, they want these words, home, yurts, activities, T-I-V-I-T's, and reservations. And I could have written this all in one line going this way. It could have been home, yurts, activities. They're going to display exactly the same. Just because I hit enter and it went down a line in my code actually means nothing. And I'll show you that right now. They're all in a straight line. And there's only this one tiny space between, but we want to add, or they wanted us to add, the non-breaking space. So it's ampersand. N S no I'm sorry N B S P non-breaking space so that I'm going to copy so that it's after these three I don't need a space after the word reservations 
And just to remind you, this is actually how it's going to look. So all these returns mean nothing. So this is how it would look if you typed it out in one line and hit save. And then over here, I'm going to refresh. Notice it just put that little bit extra space between the words. <clears throat> the only reason in my code that I bump them down a line is to make it easier to see what I'm doing because we're now going to add anchor tags and we're going to make all of these hyperlinks that jump us to another page, the actual page in the website. So if you remember, <clears throat> that's the word that shows up. We have to wrap it in anchor tags. So A and then href, the hyperlink reference equals, and then in quotes, the page it should go to. And if you look at your handout, home should go to index.html, oops, end quote, end caret. And then after the word home, we're gonna stop that hyperlinking. So we're gonna close out the anchor tag. And the non-breaking space stays there. So this opening anchor tag I'm going to use in front of each of these, and I'm just going to change out the page that it goes to. That was a copy and paste. And then the closing tag, I'm just going to copy and paste after each one of these. So each of these words is wrapped in an anchor tag. The yurts page, however, should go to a page called yurts.html. The activities page should go to a page called activities.html. And finally, the reservation page should go to a page called reservations.html. <clears throat> so now within a section that we're calling nav, and we're going to stylize it later, we have in bold type the word home, that's a hyperlink to the index page, yurts, that goes to the yurts page, activities, that goes to the activities page, and reservations, that goes to the reservation page. So if I save and I come over here and I refresh, I now see that I have um, active hyperlinks. However, they're not going to work because we haven't made those pages yet. The only page that exists right now is the home page. And again, notice that even though in my code these are stacked on top of each other, they show up left to right because nowhere in my code does it say break, go down a line. All right, um, so that is that section. Uh, number four is the content area or this main section. They have it called, I think, content div. Yep, this is the section we're going to work on next. So it is the content section, and inside of it we might have several divs or several clear totes. Just think of it that way. They're all going to go inside this content section, or we could call it main, or we could call it um, pretty much anything. It's just how we're going to call it out later and stylize it. So after the navigation ends, we are going to have our content area. So I'm going to do an opening content tag and I'm going to go down and I'm going to close out the content. So anything within these two tags is going to be that large section in the middle. And what they want us to do on section um, number four, or item four on page 59, they want us to code the main page with a div element. So, for some reason, they want us to have one plastic container in here, one div. So I'm going to open that div, and I'm going to go down a few lines, and I'm going to close that div. I'm just hitting tab to make it bump in, so visually I can tell that it's part of the content section. It just helps me see my code easier. It's not necessary, but it certainly helps. Um, inside the div, they ask for having, it says, place the following within an H2 element. Enjoy nature in luxury. So inside here, we have an H2. Whoops. Enjoy nature in luxury. Close out your heading 2. <clears throat> Save it and refresh it. Now, see how it popped up over here? This is what we have going on right now. 
Uh, number 4B says place the following content in a paragraph. So we know that we're going to have a paragraph tag. And whoops, we're going to end that when we're done typing it in with the end paragraph. And we're going to type in the information that you see on number 4B. Pacific Trails Resort offers special lodging, blah, blah, blah. Magical editing, it's all typed in. So that was step 4B. After that paragraph, still within our div, in number C, they say place the following content in an unordered list. So that's a bulleted list. UL is the code for an unordered list, and closing the UL will stop the bulleting. So everything you put inside here is going to be a bullet point. Each one has to be wrapped in an LI tag for list item. Private yurts with decks overlooking the ocean is the end of our first bullet point or first list item. And then they're going to ask us to keep typing in the remaining four list items. So go ahead and do that number 4C. So after you've typed in your four um, additional five total bullet points or list items, make sure that your unordered list is closed at the end of that, and make sure that each bullet point is wrapped in an LI tag and a close LI. And again, you can simply click on it in Notepad++ and you'll get it to highlight in purple, which is super helpful to indicate that your opening and closing tags are there. Um, save at that point and refresh your document and this is what our page looks like now. We're moving right along. Then we move on to number four, letter D, contact information. It says place the address and phone number information within another div below the unordered list. So this part is our big clear tote. This is our first div and inside of it we're going to put a smaller clear tote. That way we can tell maybe this section to be on a white background, but when we get to our address section, maybe we want that to show up on a light blue background. Just the address. So that's why we're putting it in its own div. So we need to open a brand new div and close out that div. So here's our second one nested inside this first one. So think of this as big clear plastic tote, smaller plastic tote inside of it that we're going to stylize differently. Inside this div is where they asked us to do the address information. And in the directions they say use the line break tags to help you configure this area and add extra space between the phone number and the footer. So we're going to add the name of the uh, business, Pacific Trails Resort. And to get it to force down to a new line, hitting enter on our keyboard does nothing. We have to use the break tag, and that will automatically push it down the line. I'm hitting enter just so it's clean, but I could keep writing, and I'll maybe do that just to show you. I could keep writing right along here. So 12010. Pacific, whoops, Trails Road, and then if I want it to jump down another line, I do the break code again, Zephyr, California, 95555, break again, and then the phone number, and that would be the end of it. And I want to show you how even though I ran it all together in one line, the break code is what's going to force each item down a line. So notice how it looks perfect over here. The only thing that's slightly different, if you look at the screenshot um, on figure 2.27, there is extra space between these two, so we need to add some space here. And the easy way to do that is to just add a second or maybe third break. So I have break, break. I'm going to save that. And now when I come over here and hit refresh, it bumped it down a line. 
And then they also said in their directions to add some extra space between the phone number and the footer. So that's what's coming next. So we're going to add two breaks after the phone number. Now this won't be obvious until we actually put in a footer, because obviously we aren't going to see any difference here. In our code we have it, but we're not going to see it yet. So if I refresh, it looks no different, but now the footer is being forced down into this area. So we actually, and it looks kind of weird, but we have two closing divs next to each other right here and here. But notice this second of the last one only closes out this smaller div of the address, and this very last div closes out the whole big one. Um, just so this is easier for me to see later, in my notepad, I am going to force each one of these down to another line because it helps me actually see it a little bit better. <clears throat> and nothing that I just did in Notepad by hitting Enter had any effect on the file over here. It stayed exactly the same. All right, uh, moving on to step five, it says the wireframe footer area. It says configure the copyright and email address within a footer. So let's just start with that. So we're done with our content section, that's over. Now they're asking us to make a footer section. So opening and closing footer section. And inside of our footer, they want us to configure small text size using the small element and italics using the I phrase element. So rather than doing emphasis, they actually want us to use I for italic. And they're going to have the copyright information. And then it says, put your name in an email link on the line underneath the copyright. So starting with what they want, we know that they want all of this done in small type. So we're going to do an opening and a closing small. And they also said they wanted all in italics. So an opening italics tag and then a closing italics. And notice that I'm closing them in the opposite order that I open them. So everything that goes in between here is going to be small and italicized. What they want us to have is copyright, the word, ugh, and then the symbol. And the symbol for that is ampersand copy semicolon and then our year, 2019 Pacific Trails Resort. And then on the line below that, so we're going to use a break because we want to force it down a line. They asked us to use our email um, information. Place your name in an email link. So let's just start with our name. And that could be the end of it. So we'll come back and finish this, but I want to show you right now we have the copyright word and symbol showed up using the break forced our name down to the next line. So this would work except this isn't a hyperlink to our email and that's what they ultimately want us to do with our name. So if you remember how we accomplish that, we need to use an anchor tag and an href, like where is this going? And then in quotes, mail to, and then go ahead and write your email address for school. End quote, end caret. That's our opening A tag. And then after your name, you need to close the A tag. So, the A tag is wrapped around my name, and it's a hyperlink that mails to my school email address. If I save that and refresh it over here, it turned my name into a hyperlink that'll actually work. Notice that when I'm hovering on it, I can't move my mouse without moving away, but I want you to look down in this area right here when I'm hovering. That always tells you where the hyperlink is going to. So it's a good habit to look down there to see. So the word activities, if I look down at the lower part of my frame here, it says it's going to um, users 
BRBA Desktop Pacific Activities.html. That's the file that it's pointing to. My email is actually, this link is actually going to email to me. So at this point, our index page in our Pacific Trails page is perfect. Here's what it looks like. Here's the code. So make sure you save it if you haven't already. And then if we move on to the next page, task three says they want to, us to make a yurts page. Um, again, the simple way, because we want our header to stay, we want our links to stay, and we want our footer to stay. It's just this middle content section right here that we're going to change out page by page. So if we come into this page and we come to our content area, the thing we know that we can get rid of is everything inside the content area. So I'm just going to come down here and delete this out. And now, before I move on and screw anything up, I'm going to do a file, save as, and I'm going to give this the name of our second page. And the page they want us to make right now is yurts.html. Or if your file type is already set up to be HTML, in the drop down, you don't need to type it in. If it's star dot star down here, you do need to type in dot HTML. Save that. Notice that our yurts page has changed, or the name of the page has changed, and now we're left with the content and we can just follow their directions. The first thing they say to do in step one is to modify the title and to put after the word resort, two colons, and then the word yurts. So this is a sub page that will show up in our browser tab. And then they want us to replace the heading two information with something else. Um, I went so far as to even take that out, so we'll have to add in a heading two. And they want it to say um, the yurts at Pacific Trails. Close out that heading two. And then they want us to create a definition list with three questions. What is a yurt? How are the yurts furnished? And what should I bring? So using DL tags to make an entire definition list and closing that out, DL. Now within this, we're going to have three questions or DTs and then three answers or DDs. So the information you need to type in is on page 60 in C, um, task 3, letter C. So go ahead and do that, and we'll catch up. The other thing that I didn't read out loud, but you probably caught in your notes on letter C, is that they also asked you to configure the question to display in bold text, specifically using the strong tag. So again, we have our definition list. And within it, we have our term, which is our question, and they also wanted it stylized with strong tags. What is a yurt, are those words. And then the definition itself, we need to wrap in DD tags. So we have three questions wrapped in DT and strong tags, and then we have three answers in the DD tags. All of that is inside of and wrapped between the opening definition list and the closing definition list tag. When you get that all typed in and the code is clean and works and you ask to see it in Chrome, this is what your page should look like. Again, your heading one didn't change or anything that's stylized in the header area. Anything that's in your nav area, which are those four words and the hyperlinks, didn't change. Anything that's in your footer area, which are these two items in small and italic, that didn't change. Inside our content area, we do now have a definition list and a heading two. Um, also, because you now have two pages, from this yurts page, we can get back to the home page. And from the home page, we can jump to the yurt page. So we have two of our pages done and ready to go. We do not have the final two ready. So if your code looks good, you are successfully done with making Pacific Trails two pages, which is um, the work that we've just worked through through page 60. So I'm going to show you the next step, 
which is in your handout, and that is Java Jam Coffee House. And it looks very much like what we just worked through. It's almost identical, as a matter of fact. Um, there's a home page with menu and music and jobs coming off of that. The wireframe is exactly the same with a header at the top, then navigation, then content and footer. And they're going to walk you through the process of making two pages, the home or index page, and then the menu page. And that is actually going to be your homework. This has to be uploaded to Blackboard by 9 a.m. next Tuesday the 19th when we start class again. But I want it in a specific way. So you're going to have, first thing you're going to do is make a new folder and you're going to call that folder Java Jam. And this is the folder that you're going to have your index page in and your menu page in. They have to be in this folder for it to work. When you're done, I'm going to ask you to zip this whole entire folder and upload that one zipped file to me in Blackboard. And I'm going to show you that using our Pacific example. So if you right click on the folder itself and go down to the send to menu item, a compressed or zipped folder is one of the options. That's what you want to click on. And what it's going to do is it's going to make for you a zipped folder. It might end up over here, not next to it, but it's the same name and it's just got the little zipper on it. This .zip folder is the one that I want you to upload into Blackboard. Now again, it's going to be your Java Jam that you're going to be uploading. Pacific's done. That was practice. We did it together. It's done and over with. Java Jam, when complete, is the one that you're going to right click and zip and that's what you're going to put into Blackboard. So in the learning plan, which I have right here when it loads, right here is the Dropbox. You're going to upload the compressed folder of Java Jam as a zip file here. So the folder itself should contain those two HTM files, HTML. So that gets us through what we covered last Tuesday, and hopefully when I lecture again next week, all of the recording will work, and we'll keep moving forward. We're going to do a little bit with designing, um, stylizing it using cascading style sheets, and we're going to move ahead and add some color and some images. So if you have any questions, please send me an email, and um, have a great spring break.